Hello, welcome to my video series about online game and backend technology. Today we're going to be talking about dedicated game servers. So what's that all about? Let's have a look, shall we? So uh, the problem we're trying to solve here is say we have a really fast paced multiplayer game. So we have say two computers, right? And they are both playing a game. And somehow we need to get this information from one computer to the other via the internet. Okay, so how do we do that, right? So say we have a player on this computer, they are running forward. That's my running animation, right? They're running forward. And then on the other computer, we need uh, another player, which is, right, the other player over here needs to see exactly the same thing. And this is running forward over the internet. So. Um, there's a variety of aspects to this. Uh, there's a whole bunch of communication details, things like that. But what I want to talk today about is basically what we commonly refer to as a dedicated game server is one way of solving these problems. And in future videos, we're going to be covering a variety of these. Uh, we just want to cover this particular topic here today. So today we're talking about dedicated game servers. So what is, what is a dedicated game server? A dedicated game server is a process that, um, is basically a full simulation of your game. So if you think of it as inside this box, we have a bunch of players like running around, right? Here we are doing stuff and you're running in that direction, right? And they're doing stuff, you know, maybe that person's jumping and that person's running uh, and various other things that are going on inside this dedicated game server. And its job is basically to be like, okay, um, I have a variety of computers And we are all we are all connected to this dedicated game server, right? So these are these these clients. They maybe they're a console or our man or a mobile, and they're sending information backwards and forwards about their particular player or whatever's happening inside that game, right? Maybe you are doing this, right? You're jumping for joy, right? All kinds of stuff like that. And it's up to the dedicated game server here to control all the actions of everything that's going on inside this game, be aware of everything and be the authority that it is, is what's happening inside this game. So it can send that information back down to the players here and say, hey, you know, you should be aware that this person here has moved forward, uh, this person has moved back, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's worth noting that this is gonna run somewhere on the internet. Yeah, so this is this meant to be cloud. Um, and so that means that, yeah, you're gonna have to host this somewhere, which means that, yep, you're gonna have to spend some money to actually host this somewhere. So why, why would we wanna do this? That's actually a really good question. So first thing important is that having this distinction here, right, here's my, my line between the internet and the outside world, is really useful to stop cheating and hacking. Right, so having this dedicated game server sitting on uh, your own infrastructure somewhere in the cloud, right? Like we own this whole process, means that we have full control over everything that happens behind there, um, and it's much harder to hack. Uh, clients here, these are much easier because you're actually handing them off to people, and the traffic that also sits between is also easier. So that's something that people can control, but it's much harder to get access to this. So that that can be a good reason as well. On top of that, because we have control of that dedicated game server as well, that does mean that we have control over the machines that that sits on. So if we're sitting, say, for example, um, you know, inside a nice box, for example, right, that's our, that's our actual machine, right, we have control over both the CPU, oops, and the memory on that machine. That means that we have a lot of control over exactly how much memory, how much CPU, how many processes we're gonna run on it. Um, that gives us a lot of knowledge about exactly what that's gonna happen. If, for example, we were gonna run this on, say, a client machine, right? Right, we we're gonna run this down here. We don't know what this machine is. We don't know what its processor speed is. We don't know how much memory it has. We don't know what hardware it has, anything like that. We have absolutely no idea. So that gives us a lot of control over everything that's happening inside this. So one other thing that this gives us is it gives us control over latency. So if we're looking, say for example, at our world, and this is gonna be my, my wonderful world picture, right? So this is our world here. And we have players all around the world. 
So we have uh, some players here and some players here and some players here, maybe some players here and some players here and some players here. Um, we usually, when you want to build these sort of very fast place action games, maybe we have a latency requirement, often about 50 milliseconds to about 200 milliseconds, depending on the game. So if we can place these dedicated game server processes in the appropriate place, then we can ensure that people have good player experiences. So maybe we put one here because we can see that there's a bunch of players there and we put one here because we can see there's a bunch of players there. And that then means that when these players go to connect and play this game, they can have consistent player experiences that we can measure and control connecting to game servers that we probably have placed all around the world. You know, we might also have some over here and some over here, et cetera, et cetera. And we would can place those accordingly. So having a globally distributed set of dedicated game servers is something that you will need to build, but that gives you again, a lot of control over what it is that you're building. So that gives you a little bit of an understanding of, of dedicated game servers and how they can be set up and run and why you necessarily want to do it. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. We'd love to answer them. And if you have topics that you'd love to have covered that you've always wondered about backend development for games, we'd definitely love to hear them as well. I'm going to do a whole bunch of these, so it should be lots of fun. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Neurotic. If you want to follow me on YouTube, I'm here at Mark S. Mandel. And if you want to follow me on Twitch, I'm Mark Mandel as well, where I do a lot of open source game development. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to put out a bunch of these, so you want to get notified as soon as I do so. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all later.